Hi, this is part two of a series of videos where I'm sharing the methodology or the approach that I used in a recent study to project extreme weather for uh, local communities or at a local scale due to climate change. So if you watch the first video, that's where we talked about climate change modeling in general. Um, this one we're going to, which is video two, we're going to do the demonstration of downloading the data sets that I used in this study. So I'm going to try to not put my hand in front of the camera again this time. And what we're going to do is type in down scaled climate data. Oops, let's try climate data. Climate data. So this is the data or the source of the data sets that I used in my study. And uh, this is the Pacific Climate Impacts Consortium, and they make available um, data sets. They're uh, out of Vancouver and they have already done the downscaling of data. So if you watch the last video, we talked about how the GCM data that comes out initially is at, at quite a coarse resolution. And so if we go back to our using our little pen here, um, the original GCM data uh, was at about a 250 to 60 kilometer resolution for their uh, cells. What this has done is it's made it basically about 10 kilometers. So really um, a much low, finer scale. Now, the way that downscaling is done, there are two different approaches. One, it uses uh, the GCM data and puts it into, uh, uses the output from the GCM data um, and puts it into another model and runs the models again at a finer spatial resolution. And uh, that takes a lot of computing power and uh, a lot of expertise to do that correctly. Um, the statistically downscaled data sets that are available from this site, um, they use the output from the GCMs and they use observational data at a finer scale to run algorithms that will output the GCM data at a finer scale. And so really it's taking the actual um, meteorological components for a particular area and applying that to the coarser scale GCM models and coming out with a finer scale at, for, and in this instance, it's 10 kilometers. Um, if you wanna read more about how they do that or, or the approach that they've used, they give an outline down here of the methods that were used. They give uh, data sources and other references that you can follow. So if you're interested in reading more about that or knowing more about the methods they use, certainly use that. Uh, their data sets, they've taken 12 models and they've downscaled these 12 models. You'll notice that in this um, table here, you've got different ordering of these models. And if you look at this paper here, um, this uh, will tell you the best uh, way that these suite of models are organized to get the widest range of output. And so you can see that North America has been, been divided up into different areas, and that's what's reflected in this table here. The other thing that I'll point out here before we actually go to uh, download the data is that you do need to open a, uh, an account um, and that's fairly straightforward and you can do that. And then um, here is where you go to actually get the data. So a couple of things that we'll talk about here before we move on. And that is that you'll see at the bottom here, there is a, um, a set of coordinates. And so you can tell what your coordinates are all the time. Up here, you've got your um, tools that you can use. And I'll just move me over here for a second and you can see that you can also um, zoom in. So as I mentioned before, this data set is for all of Canada. So if you're looking for something outside of Canada, you'll have to look at another source. 
The other things that you'll see over here are the um, representative pathways that they've modeled. If you open up any of these, you'll see there's a list of the climate models uh, that they have um, already downscaled. Uh, you'll see that there are two different um, uh, methods that they used of statistically downscaling the data. One has an acronym of BCSD and the other has an acronym of BCCAQ. You want to make sure when you're downloading your data that you stick to one so that you have consistent data sets. The other thing that's over on this side is that you have a data range here. So you can change the year ranges. So you could download the whole data set from 1950, January 1st, 1950, up until uh, January 1st, 2101. But that's going to be a huge data set. Um, and uh, you probably don't need all of that time. So you might want to break it down into smaller blocks. Um, so in order to break it down into smaller blocks, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here. Oops, over the camera once again. Let's see, we'll zoom in here. You'll see when you zoom in, which I've zoomed in very quickly there. Uh, let me just go back out. I don't know why this is fighting with me. There we go. Uh, as you zoom in, that there is a base map that gives you um, some city names so that you can orient yourself where you are. Do another zoom in here. Do, do. What I'm going to use is Guelph as an example because that's where I live. And you can see as you zoom in, you can see the, um, the 10 kilometer cells that make up this data set. Uh, as you get closer, you can see those. And I'm going to zoom in the whole way because really you want to be able to um, get as close as possible to make sure that the data sets that you're downloading are going to be consistent in the cells that you're downloading um, uh, so that you don't have any differences or anything that's going to mess up your data set. So, uh, if you're downloading point data, so just one cell really um, to represent, say, Guelph, the city of Guelph, and uh, what you want to do is use this pencil. Um, that will be able to select a single cell. What you also want to do is we don't want to use the whole 1950s data. So we're going to use from 1960, January 1st, to 1990. Come on. There we go. 1990, January 1st. You can see that it's net CFD and uh, CDF, sorry. And uh, we're going to use this Canadian. Um, ESM2 model. As you can see, there are three different um, variables that have been uh, produced by the GCM and then downscaled uh, for this application. The first one, TAS max, is daily maximum temperature, PR is daily precipitation, and TAS min is the daily minimum temperature. So we're going to choose one, which is TAS max. We're going to choose Guelph and we're going to make sure that we're in just one block. And so we're going to choose this here. Oh, make sure we've got the pencil chosen and we need to use this. You can see down in the corner, you've got the coordinates so you can make sure that you are choosing the same cell every time. Uh, you get asked whether you want to save it. Yes, we do. I've already made folders for this demonstration and uh, I already downloaded some data sets preparing for this yesterday. So um, what I'll show you here is that all of the data sets when you download them come out with the same generic name. So if you don't change the name, it's going to be very difficult to know in the future what you've downloaded. So we've downloaded TASMAX.
Taz Max. We want to keep the BCSD because that tells us the downscaling method. We can get rid of this aneuspline because that is common to both types of downscaling. We want to keep the model name. We don't need historic, but we do need the years that we have downloaded so that we can use them later. I recommend that you create a naming convention and use that consistently because it'll be a lot easier when you're using the CDO or any really uh, software they're gonna use to manipulate these files because this is one file of um, many, many that you're gonna be downloading. So um, this is gonna be the same as uh, the one that we already have there. So it will write over it, but that's okay. Yes. Okay, so let's get one that we, do. well, one thing I wanna show you. So let's, uh, yeah, we'll do precipitation. So you'll see that the background changes when we've changed which parameter that we want. You'll also see that this scale has changed. So it was um, in Celsius and now we've got millimeters per day. Again, we wanna choose our cell, make sure that we've got the same cell, click on it, download it, and we already did this yesterday, so I'm just gonna click that. It's the same name, we'll just let it download. One thing I wanna let it download is just to show you how quick it is to download if you have a high-speed connection. The next thing that we're gonna do is download area data, so more than one cell. So we're gonna use this um, tool. We'll go back to our TASMAX or maximum temperature. And we're gonna go um, above Fergus, over to Hespler, and past Georgetown. There's our box. The one thing about downloading area data from here is that that box will stay there now. And so it's a good idea to try to download all of your data in the same session because you don't have to draw your box over and over again. It will stay there. Uh, the thing about downloading area data is that you do actually have to hit the download button down here, unlike when you're doing point data. So you hit download, put it into a different file, and we'll put it into area. And this is Tasmax. Again, I already had the name in there, so I don't have to type it in, but I'll just show you uh, the difference in size. So this one was uh, 132 kilobytes for a single point. Now that we're doing area, it's gonna take a little bit longer to um, get and the file will be much bigger. And I think they are about 1,880 kilobytes. Um, oh, see, 2,015 kilobytes. So it, it's a bit larger. What I found in downloading this data is that you could download about six files at a time, and then you had to wait until those were finished before you could download more. I'm just going to download one more data set um, in the area so that we can use that in the demonstration of um, running the CDO software or command lines. So we're gonna do precipitation as well. As you can see, the box just stayed. We go to download. And again, I already did that one. And I'm also going to just change the dates. We're gonna make this 2011 to 2040, oops. Stop it. Sorry, that was my cat. And download this one. So this one is 2011 to 
Oh, I want that our slip here. We're going to take this out. I'm going to take this part out. And take this out. And that is precipitation. And we're going to do the same for Taz Max. Download that. A quicker way, if you're careful about changing that, is to just click on the one that was previously done and just change the years. And so that's why keeping the naming convention is very helpful. I'm just changing the years that are covered by this data set. And I'm going to do point data for that too, so that we can uh, look at that in the future. So we'll go back to point data. Make sure that the years stayed. Make sure that the years didn't change when I changed that, which they did not. Task max. Go back to just Guelph. That's Task Max, but again, the years have changed. We're now looking at 2011 to 2040. And we'll also do precipitation for that. And that's really about it. Some things that I'll uh, talk about, not only about the naming conventions, but as you can see, what you need is a, a, a high-speed connection or else this is gonna be very slow. You need a computing space that is big enough to um, store all of these files once you've downloaded them all, your complete data set and um, also to be able to work with them and manipulate them because when you're using the CDO data, you're going to get numerous copies of these files. They'll be the same size um, and uh, it'll take up more and more space. So, so you need the proper space, you need the proper personnel who can actually do um, the downloading is not that difficult, but when we get to um, the processing, you need somebody who's uh, good at troubleshooting, good at looking at data sets and uh, meticulous about keeping track of all the data. What you're going to want to do is go through and download for the study we that we just completed. We did 12, all 12 models and we downloaded all three variables, TASMAX, precipitation, TASMIN for all 12 models for RCP 4.5 and RCP 5.5, and we did four different climate data sets. We did the baseline, we did 2001 to 2040, we did 2041 to 2070, and 2071 to 2100 for all of those data sets for every parameter. So you can imagine you get a lot of files. That's it for this demonstration, and uh, the next one we'll talk about the format that these files come in, and uh, we'll do, um, and that will be a short one, and then we'll go on to actually giving a demonstration of how to work with them. Thanks for your time. Bye for now. Oops.